Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one we have Maestro Yi because when they, you know, announced that for Bufflist, I basically said on my Discord, yeah, that's going to be broken. So, you know, take a few days off for the birth of my daughter, come back and yeah, it was. And he was hot fixed, obviously, but nonetheless, we still have a special Lethal Tempo Rune Set combined with the most disease builds coming out of Narnia with the Sunfire Blade of the Rune King combos. We're seeing Sunfire combo with a lot of champions, you know. As a tank player, I would just like my items to be for me and to make me tanky. Like, I don't need to do damage. I don't need the item to do damage. I want to be unholy tanky and a CC monster. So, in this one, we'll have Master Yi. And actually, the player we have here is the rank 1 Udyr on EU West. And that's why that style, when you fuse it with the new Maestro Yi, Master Yi, you're going to have some interesting results. And that's what we want to discuss. So... Runes on your screen now, obviously there is some eyeball, you know, treasure hunter combos, another variety of secondary rune sets that you can run with, but I am a huge fan, not of this, but of cosmic and futures. I think it's a nice combo for scaling champions, snowballing champions. I do run it on things like my Kaiser jungle, and obviously cosmic is great on any other sort of off meta jungler. So let's have a look and see what we do. And also that's the thing, right? Even Canyon played, obviously rank one at the moment, uh, even he played Master Yi early in the season, early in season 12, when he was also broken. This champion does not need to be good in high elo, right? It, you know, Nidalee doesn't have to be good in low elo. Master Yi can be what he has always been and be what we thought he was, and that's fine. We don't need him to be in high elo. We have Belveth for that, all right? So that annoyed me quite a lot. Those changes just seemingly just out of left field, absolutely stupid, made literally zero sense. Everyone knew that these changes would take him over the top. It's just a bit trolly. You know, it's just a bit trolly. However, if you are just looking for a quick fix for some of your LP gains, this will be the way to do it. Now, this will be the way to do it. Excuse me, I am understandably significantly, uh, significantly sleep deprived. There you go. So, we do have Reckless in the bot lane, um, which is always good and juicy. And obviously, Master Yi, typically, you know, with the Zed dying and the invade there, I mean, why is... Excuse me. Um, please forgive... The order of the scoreboard, you know, typically most of when you face them in lower elo games, their first clears are very, very slow, like very, very slow. Now, the damage, sorry, the damage reduction on his W, that was hard fixed to go down. I mean, that should have been dealt with in the first place, but 28 seconds to 9 seconds, even though he drains mana, wow, wow, you know, that's a, that's a third off. It's really absolutely quite ridiculous. And the Q redirection when you exit, that's, you know, that's a nice quality of life. If I do enjoy that. And yes. You can combine um, your team comp and your CC, and you can destroy a Mercy. You can definitely beat Mercy, but at the same time, it's a pop stomper. You know, it thrives on the chaos. Now, most, most Mercy Yi's, what you guys are doing is full clearing. You're thinking, ha ha, I have this them now. But your full clear isn't exactly that quick anyway. And you're better off five camping looking for action, specifically in a meta where you're going to be facing a lot of full clearing junglers who don't think about the five camp cut in. Uh, even Belves will not do that, even though they should. So here you know, she starts here, goes up, she's on this, you ping it out. This guy has got try hard, no chat. All right. Now I covered someone, uh, not this person at all, but a lower elo player, like a lower elo, not low elo, lower elo, in around Diamond 2 on the main channel recently, who was like, you know, no ping, sound muted or something like that. But he didn't have the awareness to play like that. And a Yi in Challenger... Farming jungle and challenger has to have that awareness. If you're going to turn your chat off and your pings off, you have to track well, counter gank well, and know when to not farm. And that's always the biggest thing, especially with Mercy. So Belveth goes top top side here, feeling probably a little bit desperate. She does have two assists, obviously. Um, so not in that sense, just in the sense of the Mercy making a play first. She'll track exactly what he's doing. Mercy, should this have happened earlier, could now steal this grunt, but obviously didn't. So we're going to shoot on up to the top side here. Pike's roaming. No stress. No stress, okay? Don't overtly commit yourself to ganks and cleanups that, that are you know, really doomed. Now, if he was here during that moment, yeah, of course we rotate. You know, even we'll get the experience, we'll get some stuff. But otherwise, yes, you are focused on sequencing. Yes, you are focused on six. Yes, you are focused on scaling. But that doesn't mean ostrich mode activation. Mm -hmm. Look up, use your eyeballs, and let's have a look to see what's going on. So obviously, if Belveth does this and then this... Uh, then we know she's most likely going to come on down here. However, as I discussed, and I'm going to pause it very briefly, in the video on my main channel, you can always then, especially if this is up and not this, you can always cut in for the three camp to match the side of the Yi. Because hmm? if Belveth is going up and Yi's going down, and you lose tempo through a death or through bad pathing, like in this situation, sometimes it's better rather than going this up to kind of keep that uh, that opposite. Now we want a mirror because we are decently strong, and of course we want to combine with a bot lane and a mid lane and so on. Um, obviously, we have the benefit here of 
seeing that in the tracking, but that is something I have covered blind quite often on, on my main channel. So you can have a look at the elevate your jungling uh, dynamic prior thing. That's why I talk about that kind of stuff. Swapping directions is so damn important. And the E cuts the map. What does that mean? Instead of full sequencing blindly like a, I don't know, piece of licorice, decides, hey, look, stuff's happening. Let me cut in. I'll do the stuff. I'll do the good things. And then I can move on and do this. And now we see the Belveth on the bottom side here with added CS. So we know what she did. <laughs> and see, this is what I mean a little bit. You see the Q exit angle there is huge. Um, we kind of not, we don't really want to dive for this, but I, th I think it's inevitable at this stage. Uh, we do have W, we do have meditate. Okay, so as I said, don't go and die for those stupid situations. Remember, you know, you're cleaning up, you're definitely focusing on your farm. Yeah, yeah, this is good. You know, you've got Pike rotating. They know it. We know Belveth is deep. We don't need to disappear. We can kind of shadow, wait, anticipate, collapse, and then scan. They've been in our house, and we can go to Krugs. Or, if you see more things... You see? We are 102. Now, if you're a scaling jungler, not the best. We're only level 4 at 6 minutes 20. We're farming jungler. We're rank 1 Udir on the server. We know how to farm with 1 KP and come out 3 levels ahead. But ye... He really does like to get a few kills going because it's the mental damage that it does as well, right? Especially in gold and diamond and silver. A Yi gets three kills early. Everyone freaks out. He gets a dragon. He gets a herald. He starts infusing a lane. He camps that lane by, through this direct sequencing. He starts destroying people. And, um, you know, in case you want to wear the true damage, the true, do we need this? No. <laughs> There's definitely ways to beat Master Yi, but he's really a stat check champion. I do like they gave him a bit more skill expression, the mana drain, the Q redirection. Those are good things, all right? I like those changes to the champion, but his numbers are just too obscene, and he's just too diseased to face when he's just out stat checking everyone, which is currently the, the, the state of the meta. Now, he is against the modern version, I suppose, I guess, in Belveth, but that's obviously something, you know, that Riders are dealing with, dialing back the numbers. Now, when you do that, so that's a core... Game plan, right? Look for your full clear, at least 5 cam action if you need to. Uh, think about cutting the map, counter ganking, tracking, and of course, making sure you rotate to the good fights. But don't overcommit and don't die where you don't need to, okay? Because deaths are time where you're off the map and you're not going to be able to get the experience necessary and the gold necessary to smash people's heads in or cut them up with your Yoshimitsu blade. Now, obviously in this situation with Futures Market, you can get things sooner. Here we have the Berserkers, uh, Yone. I'm not, I'm not going to alpha that, my man. Uh, <laughs> I know some Yees would alpha that, but you aren't those Yees, you aren't those Yees, are you? Good grief, can I please speak? That would be great, thank you so much. Hang in there with me. I will get through this, all the content will come back. I just wanted to get something out for you guys. Main channel got the tealers. I wanted to bring you a few contents uh, this weekend just to kind of revitalize and say, hello, I'm here. I'm just busy um, dealing with, uh, with, with a, a shitter and a burper. Yeah, but she is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. So... More than scuttle crab, let me tell you that much. More than double scuttling a jungler. Right, rotation by Casey Reckless on his ADC of choice. Syndra, Reckless not on ADCs has historically been a bit... But, you know, we'll take this, maybe this is good. And now, obviously, in this situation, when people die, when people show up, or when people are seemingly not sequencing properly, hit the plant, get some information, informa information. Because, you know... If you don't know where she is, and in gold, sometimes this, this Belveth will get caught here, and you won't see if, like, three, four minutes, and you have no idea where the hell she is because she was in a bush waiting to gang somewhere and just didn't do anything about it. So it's always good to hit the plant to see to get visual confirmed. Uh, she is taking the dragon. We see that, which means she'll get true form. We're waiting for the Yone to overcommit on the Pantheon. We say, well done. Is that an Ashen Knight, Kappa? And now, of course, Tarek is roaming to the mid lane here, clearing the wards. Zed, you died level one, my friend. It is all on you. And the Herald Secure is great, you know, because if you know that she's going to take that dragon, definitely deny the Herald to the Belveth. And he loves Herald just as much as Belveth does because cash infusion, baby. We need some VC capital to get us to Sunfire Blade of the Rune King. It is disgusting. Um, we were seeing Katarina also run it. I fear for tank itemization because it's always abused, you know, like Stoneplay Casio. Uh, good rotation here at this stage. We weren't really talking about this, but you're seeing the drain, the stuns. CC between Lissandra and Tarek is enough to kill a Master Yi, but this is good. This is good. You see, when you make these plays, try not to over... Don't... Try not to greed for that first turret. You know, 
try and look at the map and see what things are moving. But at the same time, by forcing that rotation, by forcing ultimates out, your Zed, who, has had, who hasn't had a good game, is now able to push, get some plates, decompress, get some solo experience without threat of death, and now he's the same level, you know? And that, that's a huge thing to think about when you're talking about jungle impact. It's not just the direct impact that you have the lanes, it's the indirect impact. And Master Yi, that's what we want. So, we're 2-1-2. Two two. Not exactly the best game. Instead, we're going to ult back in because we can. Yone is here. And so it begins. Now, Belveth, let's have a look. La -da -da -da. What are we at? 31. Pfft. 31, sliding up into the side here. There's an RNG crab on the top side. We have Syndra again moving with the pings. You see the pings coming through here. Masji's pinging it because he knows Lissandra, um, her R will be up soon. There she shows mid lane again. Uh, Belvis shows out of the top lane gank while well, Pantheon's pushing. He gets E to death. Obviously, she lost the scaling on that. It went, it went from 20 to 28 lifesteal, just to 20. Why would you check? Yes, you're up a level, but it's Master Yi, my friends. Wait a second. It's close. It's close. This won the fight. I'm not a fan of Exhaust Smite Belveth, but in that situation, it done good. It done good. And she had a level lead. I mean, she was just putting her head down while the Yi was playing a little bit with the tower play disc, and that's what I'm saying here. These deaths are costly when you're Yi. You know, you can defeat him. I'm not saying it's unbeatable. I'm just saying it's unnecessarily strong, and I'm glad we have a Belveth here because it's kind of, you know... A more interactive and basically the high elo version of, of someone who can farm and scale and become quite a hyper carry, which is just always fun. We have compromised significantly our experience gain. We're now down two levels. This is not optimal, but that's also why I chose this video because there were so many giga turbo stomps with like 80% KP, 70% KP. There was an enchanter and mouse G plus one enchanter equals auto win. I mean, it's almost like you cannot lose if you have a Lulu, a Zillion, a Janna, a Seraphine. Sometimes there's a Seraphine and a Senna. I mean, goodness gracious me. Imagine facing that in your game. You just dodge that lobby, trust me. And I don't even like dodging. So, in those situations, okay, um, it's obvious that he's going to win at Snowball. But in these ones, down a little bit of cash money, not really having the best game. We do have here Blade plus Zerkas, all right? So, we're good to go now. Yeah, this is the DPS threat we want. Belveth is in the bottom lane. She has no true form, so you have to track that, obviously. Try and kill him before they all come through, which, of course, we do. That is just a great four-on-one destruction. Now, you kill someone. If your goal is to fall back to base and do something else, like go topside, you are wrong. We are ye. We need to snowball. We do have 85 seconds on it. Oh, we do have alt up. Yeah, I was going to say the cooldown. It gets reset, obviously. But here we go. <laughs> I didn't mean to say 85 seconds. I meant we just activated our alt. And we shall do that. Shut down and move out. Channel. Boom. Right there. Right there. 175 attack range. It's totally unnecessary. We could have done meditate buff first. Could have done attack range buff first with a key a quality of life. There's so many things we could have done in iterations. Nah, they just threw the kitchen sink at him. But as you can see, not too difficult to execute on, right? And obviously this I liked. This was really, really good, right? The extension of duration and specifically on ghosts as well. That's why we do see some ghost years. Um, but the ghost change that came through, plus this whole concept of extending durations on takedown, I think is such a good one because it gives you direct counterplay as well when you're, when you're against those champions, you know? Try to not give him one kill, let it expire, boom, we win. And so, there are obviously ways you need to think about this. However, we have the second dragon spawning, alrighty? And, uh, we're gonna sequence down here, and now, because obviously now we have Bami Cinder. So the Bami Cinder is going to start amping up this mid-game clear speed, which is really, really huge as we finish the first phase of the game, 14 minutes. F early game usually ends, I usually say 15, but it's technically, strictly speaking, 14 because of the plates falling down. Um, and, you know, your pieces start to move around, but we still have all our turrets up. Okay, we need to try and decide if we want to rotate to this. Because the Sandra has now used her ult not on us, and because Tarek's uh, stun has not gone through, that is a prime signal for us to go when we want to be careful here Ooh, the e went through don't get cc too much nice done by the pantheon we get the kill on the lissandra with the q beautifully done now whole team's moved in we're gonna try hard no check alpha q that again and we're gonna go alpha again and then we're gonna run away and this is what i'm talking about ladies and gentlemen that 90 second initial meditate obviously it goes down after the first few uh microseconds as it were but hey does that look at all fun to play and at the same time, that's a great example. Both of these fights we've just seen, not a perfect early game, not the best sequencing. For a fraction of a second of time, we were down two levels against another hyper-scanning farming jungler. Well, not farming, but you know what I mean. Just with a bit of patience, waiting for CCs to be blown. 
waiting for teams to use crucial spells like ultimates that could affect us. And then going in is huge. Now, because you can redirect your outlet, okay, with your Q a little bit, it's such a nice change. And if you're a Yi main, you can tell everyone else in the comments, go ahead in the comments when people are talking about this, tell them how great that actually feels. But the, uh, this one, not a fan. And obviously this is always overlooked, but this, the, the Wuju style specifically for me, all right, that one specifically for me, you can see the numbers, right? Yeah, that one is because I'm a tank, you know? So I, I feel like I'm not a tank against him. I feel like with Blade plus Sunfire plus E, I'm just like, there you go. So, I mean, I can CC, but if I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead very, very quickly. Kraken obviously is also a little bit better in terms of killing tanks, but you know what I mean, right? Mm. Mm. I'm gonna be, I'm very, very curious to see if they just, you know, remove numbers as we have hand pet big dog. Um, it's true, you should always hand pet your big dog. I get it now. <laughs> My mind has been made innocent this week. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see if they just dial numbers back or remove something. But I, I still don't know why we're even here, you know. I, I don't know why we're even here. However, where there's a split pushing ADC who then ults out of Pantheon, we wait for that ult to be used, and then we go in, and then we can use our alpha. It's beautiful. It's beautiful timing. And it's almost like an assassin. Right? You're almost playing like an assassin in terms of your positioning and waiting for things to move around. Reckless is doing ADC things and just farming it up and pushing waves, but he's 5 one, 3 he's playing very well. They're going to double push this tier 2 here, so hopefully he can get this tier 1. And we want to try and cut them off here because they have not reset, they're a little low, we can try to do something. We do have ultimate up as well. Wait for the stun to go, and because the stun has gone, we do get stunned by the Lissandra. We're not going to get that through before the Taric ult comes through because we are the masters and originators of Funnel. We have on the back line the, the Yone going, can we get a kill? Yes we can. Um, but obviously at this point, no reset, but we are in range for the alpha, stuns are active, we're gonna meditate, 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 and we die. So, there is a way to kill him, and that was what happens when Marcy's get a little bit overzealous. Lissandra W back up, Belveth has W up, you're gonna get stunned and you can get blown out, especially when you're low HP. When you're higher HP, you know, the damage reduct can be really, really nice because you absorb all of their stuff. And yeah, you lose a bit of health afterwards, but it's enough that you can survive. They have nothing left and you can do stuff. But when you're low HP, um, it can kind of just delay the inevitable. Sometimes you'll get out, but you know what I mean. So, 10-3-5. And that's the thing. How unassuming was it 10-3-5? Pretty unassuming, I would say. I mean, it's not like we were running around just smurfing it. Um, we just played a pretty tempered game, you know? Did our stuff, found when we could, cut them out when we could, rotated the fights we thought we could win. We're against a 7-3-4 um, uh, True Form Belveth. And now we're going to go in with the Alpha. Here we go. And look at this. Look at this. This is what exactly what I'm showing you. E was activated as well. We're not going to use our R whatsoever. Um, we have the cooldown at a benefit of the Q as well. And we, we're actually going to have to end up using it. Because <laughs> mobility. Why would you... Uh, for a second there, I thought she flashed and the rest. She didn't have flash. Good, goodness gracious. But good waste of time. And if you see this happening on the red team, push up waves, buy a little bit of time. If there's an objective you can secure, do so. But as you can see, the damage is really quite strong. And here we go. Let's keep track of the six. Ah, you can't see, sorry. 657 we're at at the moment. Um, we're going to go Rage Blade next, obviously. I linked the match history in the description. So if you're on the server, you can go download the replay and have a look at the atomization damage as well. But I would never lie about the numbers. It's not something I do. I'm Science teacher, astrophysics degree, I mean, truth is important. James Webb Telescope Enjoyer, like everybody else. Uh, except, you know, I was doing it 10 years ago. <laughs> However, Tarek is still in the mid lane now. Let's just hope Funnel never comes back. Uh, let's see, a little bit of split push and decompression there, forcing a bit of a rotation. We have the red buff, she shows. We can farm inside out, not ideal, but if you're coming from base outside in to join, if you're going bot lane, you can go outside in or inside out, depending on where you want to end up. If you want to end up bot lane, inside out. If you want to end up mid lane, outside in. Uh, dragon spawning, we were, we were lucky to get that second one, but we could have given it up. If there was no fight, we could have given it up, no stress. This is huge. You do not want to give fishies to Belveth. Now, obviously, she got fishies uh, when she slayed the Herald, and she'll get fishies if she solos the Baron. So it's things you need to be aware of. She just summons it here. We she shows an award, clearing that up, because obviously the dragon's here. This is crucial, though. Lissandra does have TP. She's got a base first. We see that. Can we make a pick before Lissandra is able to get in the fight? Can we make a pick before Tarek 
uses his ult and uh, we kind of have the um, Belveth get true form. Now, Yone dies because he overcommits. That's his fault entirely, but you always have to play off of that. We avoid the stun, most important here. Nice hook by the pike. We're not going too deep, all right? We're just kind of making sure we're playing intelligent, but that's a huge thing. Even as must ye. Nice stun, Reckless. So, if you happen to be Master Yi or any sort of champion that can carry games solo, you can help your team in rough situations. So Syndra's backing, we know she has TP, she needs to replenish his HP or mana, she needs to spend that item and then she, a gold, and then she needs to TP in. Their team has been pre-chunked and put out of position. That's huge, alright, that's absolutely huge. And because the Yone disrespects it and dies, we can follow this up with more picks. Just don't overcommit, get CC'd and, and get killed. And that happens too much, like... You'll kill the Yone, you'll kill the Tarek, and they're like, ha ha ha, and then you go too deep, and you die. Instead of just doing this and doing this. At least, this isn't to do, it's to kind of bait them in. So, now that the Baron is up, there's a Belveth, we have to be very, very cautious about um, us showing bot lane with a split push, which of course you can do. But the 1v1 potential is crazy, and, and I think this is a good window into a bit more of a teamfight-centric, a teamfight gaming uh, Master Yi, but he's still going to end up carrying this game pretty heavily. Pretty heavily. So, Baron is up. We have 697 in pocket, so that's absolutely fine. No reason to go back to base. Uh, Belveth, we do get stunned, but we stun back. A lot of CC in this game. Kill him first. Obviously, he has an ult. Well, he does have an ult, actually, but kill him first always with that ult. <laughs> that was funny. L for the wave and tax it for the Republic and say, very nice. And now we can go up and t take this uh, Baron or bait it. I do kind of like trying to bait it, but you can do it super quickly with the E. This is the spike, right? This is a spike here, because you can solo Baron's very easily as a Belveth and Master Yi. So the Yone kills the pike, right? Lissandra is dead. Reckless is zoning, which is perfect, because he doesn't need to be on it. He doesn't really help in this situation nearly as much as if he was uh, an ADC. Nice pull. And that's essentially nice return push as well. I mean, what else can you do as a red team here? Push, take, and kite down here. What we want to do is go da down and disengage. There's a plant here. Don't cheat. Don't... Just go down and get out. <laughs> Just go down and get out. It's not difficult, guys. It's really not difficult. And now you've been collapsed upon by a team that just got barren and just refresh and spent cash money. Hmm. But the Zed face checks. But bless him. Doesn't matter. Backline dive. Here we go. Assassinate. Beautifully done. Yone comes back. Doesn't really matter. We can meditate. We can absorb damage. So can Belveth. Doesn't really matter. Can we kill before the Terragol goes through? Yes, we can. Rotating is Syndra. Rectus snipes the kill. And, you know, that's, it's just, it blows my mind. So, what did I say here? We did this. If we didn't overcommit too much, maybe we could have slid to Baron directly. Right? But overall, the perfect play. Drag in, make a pick, take the next objective. The first pick allows you to get another pick, which allows you to get the objective. Make another pick from that, because their whole back timings are distorted. Take another objective, the Baron. Now, the enemy team says, well, there's nothing else we can do. We might as well push a wave and take a tower. Great. But kite down and get out. Because you know they're all going to be resetting with Empowered Recall four seconds and pushing back out here. You haven't spent they have. So look to regroup as a team, but they don't even in Challenger. And that's my point. So in silver and gold and diamond and platinum, these windows are available to you as well. You just got to know how to punish it. And obviously from there, you can easily 1-3-1 this game, okay? Because we have a Syndra, we have a Pike, we have the Zed, we have the Pantheon. The Pantheon and the Pike and the Syndra probably want to be together. The Zed definitely wants to be Unza top lane. Can we avoid this stun? We're getting 3v1 here. Let's have a look to see how we do it. Uh, mm -hmm, okay, we die. We overcommitted. So in this case, you push... You see one, two, and you suspect three. You can cut in and join your team. That's what the one, three, one's good at. Same thing here. You can push this and cut in. Then you can shove it down the throats because your three v three wins, and you don't have to necessarily one v three yourself. You're putting yourself in the hands of your team here, and usually, if you've done a good job, a good job, they will be fine. They, they will be absolutely fine. If you're getting them dragons, you're getting them barons, you're getting them gold throughout the game, and I think this has been a really good balanced e game. It has not been the toxic play style that people that me included think affect low elo players and that's the thing with low elo players you can farm and be very uninteractive um and because you're farming well you get gold that anyone who isn't doing what you're doing doesn't get which means you have stat check them and you win right in higher elo you have to do things to, to be relevant and the futures market does aid in that so now we're at 1036 and that's not really the benefit you know the damage is nice but the the the, the hp 
the resistances, the haste, plus the tenacity, plus the bonus HP. All of this just makes you even more unkillable through your 90% damage reduck, plus whatever the hell it is from the hotfix. Now, 55 to, uh, well, 45 to 55. Yeah. Can't believe it was 60. <laughs> 60. 60. Uh, right. There's a dragon spawning. We do want to be there. We're going to go ahead and yeet ourselves a blue buff. Um, our team is now being caught out doing the opposite. Zed is now finally split pushing. So what do we do about this? In that situation, well, there's an open in here. So let's shove the hell out of this and maybe look to cut in once we have vision control. And if you really think like you don't need this, two to one, there's no stress. It's not worth dying for. It's not worth dying for at all. You can push it. See, now look, see the vision. Are they pushing the inhib? Has to be respected. He's cutting on down now. Could they have cut in? All of this has to be respected by the red team. But at the end of the day, we're still down in numbers, right? We still only two. So this is a, a, a fight. You have to recognize you're only two. Do we go for the 50-50? Oh, reckless, juicy, juicy. We don't get the uh, the dragon, but we get the kill. We re Good job, Tristana. And now we... It is so annoying to watch. I remember season 10, uh, doing my, my nice climb with Volibear. I think when, you know, for, for, what was it? Up to Master, I think I had like a 75% win rate on Volibear specifically. Um, that's when he was reworked, right? And it was good fun, you know? I had fun obviously doing that. And I had to dodge quite a few funnel lobbies because it was quite common back then to do so. And it was basically this unwritten agreement where we just, someone would dodge. If you could dodge, you dodged the lobby. Anyone who funneled, they are so degenerate and disgusting that they did not deserve the courtesy of having the game play out. But at one point, all of us in the lobby couldn't dodge, you know, for one reason or another. And uh, we had to play it. And I got soul. We, we got a Baron. And uh, we lost one fight. And he got one pentakill. And we... Basically, because it was a little bit early, he didn't, they didn't quite end, but it was insane how quickly we almost lost the game to a Yi with a Tarek just because of who they are as champions. It's, it's, it's not healthy. Really, really isn't when, when they're super, super, super strong. Um, but fortunately, those days are done. I'm just kind of highlighting he's a firework champion. Like this kind of early game should be as bad as it gets almost. You know, obviously you'll be a little bit further behind in certain respects, but really... Uh, that's what you're kind of looking for. So, <laughs> Death Dance completed, Rage Blade completed. We're going to go for a final zeal itemization spike. And, you know, that should be it. We're looking for one fight. You can solo this, 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 this Baron very, very easily. We haven't even busted their base yet. So, you're just kind of looking to thrive on, <laughs> almost, thrive on, on making picks with your Syndra. And I just wanted to rewind because, look, we saw her split pushing bot lane, which is why we do this, right? And the, the ult gets baited out. Now he's now we're trailing him. He's detached from his team. We can use the alpha to get back into position. Attack speed range really nice. We can flash in again. And we're just going to keep getting resets. Keep chasing down. Exhaust doesn't really matter at this stage. This right here is why when people are like, just kite him, bro. Just CC him, bro. But it's all in the Yi's power to kind of let his team bait it out and play around that. And obviously, Belveth is now tilted. Don't blame anybody, Belveth. You didn't do what the Yi did in terms of objective and map control and pick control. He deserves the win. We give an 18-4-12 challenger win to the rank 1 Udyr on a champion he doesn't main, but has a little, little bit of a similar play style to when you play properly. So that's Master Yi buffed. WTF is Master Yi at the moment. Please write more nerfs. Um, but at least maybe soon. A few other champions, a lot were buffed. There's a lot to look at. I'm going to bring you a lot of different junglers in the next two weeks. But yeah, tier list on the main channel. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. The Warwick and Volibear Live Companion Guides are linked below. Always good. And uh, yeah, I'll be running another bootcamp with Ghost Academy as well. Go see the best jungle tier list for a pre-roll on that. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. All the best. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial with hopefully a little bit more rest so I can speak properly, but...